I'd like to call a Tuolumne County Transit Agency of June 14th uh, meeting to order. First item on the agenda, oral communications. Anyone that wishes to speak on any item that's not on the printed agenda, please uh, come forward. Seeing no one, we'll go to item number two. Consent calendar, approval of the May 10th, 2017 meeting minutes. We have a motion. Second. Second. Any public comment? Seeing none, call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, this is not working. So we're going to have a brief delay here and we'll get back to it. <laughs> we'll call the meeting back to order here and um, uh, item number three progress report on the construction of the Tuolumne County Transit Center. Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, Tyler was at a meeting earlier today with the project team and I'm gonna ask him to report and then I'll have a few wrap up comments after he reports. Okay. All right, thank you, members of the Transit Board. So we, uh, despite this last weekend, we've, we've had fairly good weather here for the last couple of months. So we have been making good progress on the building itself. Uh, we're probably getting close to about 90% done. Uh, there's still some flat work to complete, uh, but exciting, you know, touches are starting to come together, uh, staining uh, some of the cedar on the interior of the building. Uh, clocks are going up. Uh, Floors are being finished, uh, uh, doors are being added, um, roofs are being completed, mechanical systems getting ready to be tested. So we're really um, fairly advanced here in the schedule now and um, looking forward to, uh, you know, realizing uh, the opening of this, which is, uh, according to the schedule, still a little ways out. I think we're looking at August 21st or so at this point in time. Um, but uh, the letters are on the building. You can kind of see it from 108 there, and uh, the schedules are being uh, finalized now to, to serve the facility. So at this point in time, we are uh, pleased to report that the, the building is coming along really well, and uh, the shade structure is there. Uh, bike racks went in today. Uh, water fountain is uh, getting ready to be installed. So as you can tell from some of the things I'm sharing, it's, it's really some of the finishing touches on our portion of the project here. Any questions? I got a question. Go ahead, Randy. You know, it's nice to know about completion. How are we doing on budget? That, that one I'll take. Um, PG&E is causing us continued delays and we recently received a delay cost adjustment request from our uh, operator or contractor uh, mo frank is the point person on getting pg e going it's causing delays to putting in the road which is we're not going to put the all the sidewalk on and all the bus bays in until the road goes in in one shot but all those undergrounds got to go in first and we're having a hard time with PG&E. So that is impacting our budget. Uh, most of those costs, I believe, will be borne by the road component of the job. It's more of the county side of the job. Remember, there's two different sides. There's our transit facility and then there's the road. We will bear some of those costs. So our, I'm getting concerned about budget and that's what I was noting here to call out to you is that we do have those delays and then we have rock issues as well. Again, most of those impacts are related to the road construction component, but uh, anything you can do to lend a hand to help the CO's office break through with uh, PG&E would be very much appreciated. Uh, that was going to be my question, uh, not so much the budget part, but the PG&E delays and as far as uh, getting everything buttoned up there. It's understandable. Uh, the other thing I uh, might add is that on the 21st, uh, you can have it, but I won't be here on the on the 21st. It's my sister's 80th birthday, and uh, I need to uh, need to be there. So that date is not likely to hold at the rate we're going right now. <laughs> All right, so that 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 would be fine. But I, I did want to offer if the board, it's starting to look pretty nice out there. It's still very much a construction site because we can't quite finish a lot of the sidewalk frontage stuff. 
but the building's looking pretty good. We're at about the 90% completion stages of kind of the main parts of it all. And if anybody wants to go out uh, to a walk of the site, we can do that. We've checked with Ann Fremd, and she's sit and cleared us to do that. So I extend that offer to board members. Okay. Uh, no action on that. Any public comment? Seeing none, we go to uh, item number four, adopt resolution 40-17, approving the TCTA public transportation recommended budget for fiscal year 2017-18. Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, as you know, each year you complete your annual unmet transit needs hearing to help us determine what service changes we need. This year there were no unmet transit needs that were reasonable to be met. Uh, also impacting your budget is decisions you made last fall regarding uh, reductions in services, particularly discontinuance of the uh, Route 6 uh, service to Phoenix Lake Basin. You've discontinued that. We're going to backfill that with some additional general public dial ride so that those folks out there that are transit dependent aren't stranded. Uh, so those things are major factors in your budget uh, on the transit side. I'm going to let Laura go through some of the more the particulars, but I did just want to point out that those changes alone will reduce your operating cost about $80,000 next year. Now, that those changes will not go into effect until the uh, transit center is opened up because we don't want to change the schedules m numerous times to the public that uses our service. They Their lives end up revolving around the schedules, and so we need to impact them to the least amount possible. Uh, but I just want to call that out as kind of a, a major factor in this year's budget. So with that, I'm going to turn over to Laura to kind of go over some of the highlights of the budget. Okay. Laura. Good afternoon, Council. Um, this year for the TCTA, the staff is um, presenting a balanced budget. And uh, excuse me, but the the background in your packet has been revised. There have been some last minute changes made, but Denise had handed out a new budget and um, a staff report, and that's the most recent. Can you. you point out to us the re where the revisions took there place? There were some minor changes. Um, I believe on this one, there was a look at this a seventeen thousand dollar fund balance at the end now the ba the budget is now balanced there was a slight change to the staffing cost and i believe that's it but they're all updated in the new handouts um I should also point out this is your recommended budget so we can move forward beginning July 1st we'll bring back a final budget uh, in probably July or August I think the numbers are going to get much more positive because we'll start seeing some of the benefits of SB1 <coughs> coming into play which will increase some of the uh, diesel sales tax that goes in to pay for your state transit assistance fund so we're we're going to move in a very positive direction overall as well um, carryover funds, things like that are not included in this budget unless it was a, a, pot, a number that we knew okay, so we had. We, we would expect those to come back in July? July or August, okay. Um, yeah. We did have some positive information on LTF. It's a sales tax. And the auditor's office has estimated that is a 4.7% increase for this year. So that's reflected in your budget. Um, staff, FTA, operating assistance fund, those, those had some slight changes. Um, and there, you can see the difference on the budget, but nothing significant. Um, this year, the transit contractors rate goes up by 2%. It will be offset by the decrease in hours and um, so uh, it will be offset by a decrease in the hours. Okay, so that was the change in our, our contract. Uh, our contract based on elimination of one of the routes. Yeah, was the that? actual contract goes up by 2%. It goes up but 
because we reduced the route, our cost goes down? Yes. Okay. Yes. And the net difference is about $80,000. Okay. Yes. Uh, and reduce service hours. Yeah. Okay. Um, fuel cost, we show an increase of about 15000 bring it to 165 and we recently have seen um, prices go up. So it's based on an average of 256 a gallon. Okay. Uh, you know, we're going to see an increase of about what 12 cents a gallon here in november no, november mm -hmm. uh, uh, have it, you taken that into consideration the 12 cents is based on taxes and we are exempt from okay, paying so we're fuel okay. tax. all right that's right yes. i forgot about that um we are going to continue the dodge ridge ski bus holiday trolley and special other community special events with an addition of pinecrest it's, I'm not sure exactly when that's to be started, but we're looking at getting that going fairly soon. Yeah, we, we will be getting additional funds through the cap and trade funds. It's that little bit that I often complain is not nearly enough. Uh, looks like about 40 plus thousand dollars or so in funding, and we've requested the state approve us doing a service to Dodge Ridge, excuse me, not Dodge Ridge, Pinecrest during the summer. We've talked about that and it's an objective of this I board. And that would be something <coughs> real So possible. we went ahead and we think it's going to happen. We put it in our budget uh, just waiting approval from the state. If it drags out too long, we may not do something this summer. We may defer to next summer where we can get proper marketing of the service ahead of time. Do you know what the schedule of their improvement plan is as far as increasing the parking spots and things in that area? No, what we're hoping is that as they get some of the new uh forest supervisors for and staff in place up there that we will sit down with them and make sure that we're our service operations are coordinated with the, some of those improvements okay um, we also had an increase in rent it's normally um a 3.4 percent increase of the cpi uh, and that's we, written into the existing contract yes yeah. Yes. I, can um, you tell me how many more years we have on that contract? I know I, oh. it's. Uh, I think it's two years. Two more years. Yeah. yeah. And I think we also have two more years left on our uh, store contract. Um. Staff time. Uh, there was some slight adjustments which are on the um, positions um, how much time is being spent on transit and TCT we do time studies so there was it would remain the same I think the transportation planner too shifted from an 80 20 to a 90 10 um, not a whole lot going on there uh, we are putting in for a promotion transportation planner one to a transportation planner two and that's calculated in uh, this year the executive director and senior administrative analyst will receive a 3% COLA as of July 1st um, all the other staff received theirs on February of this year 2017 and that's based on all the county um, negotiation and MOUs. The uh, transit facility is, we kind of looked at it, it was scheduled to be completed this year. Apparently it's going to be a little bit go over. So a lot of the funding and expense, you won't see it in this budget, but what we'll do is we'll see what actually hits at end of the year. And if we need to adjust, we'll adjust in the final budget. Um, we don't have any real numbers now. It would be really hard to even make an estimate on that. But final budget probably will have some adjustments there. Um, you'll see a reduction in revenue and expense um, because of the bus purchases that happened in 16-17. About $620,000 you'll see reduced on both, both sides, revenue and expense. And then we have our normal $50,000 dollar contingency fund that's required for us to carry over. Darren, what determines the purchase of a new bus? Uh, generally, we look at the useful life of the bus. Uh, the Federal Transit Administration has uh, some 
the numbers in there of about five years and right. I think 140,000 miles. We typically will go, uh, we'll push them up to about 100, 180 to 220,000 miles is not uncommon for us. And they're still pretty good at that point. Yeah. Does, the, does the trolleys cost the same as the regular buses? There's not a huge difference in operating one versus the other. Uh, I think from a maintenance and durability standpoint, the trolleys and the ski bus are built on a Freightliner truck chassis. They're actually designed to go more miles, perhaps 350 to 400,000 miles. The numbers I was giving you is kind of a fleet-wide average because the cutaways are built on more of a, the cutaways being the smaller buses, they're basically a van. They cut the back of it off. They put in more of a passenger area on it. It's a, you know, probably a one-ton van chassis under it. Uh, they aren't designed to go as many miles as the uh, Freightliner chassis that you have underneath of the trolleys. So, and transmissions are fantastic. Uh, Allison transmissions as well in those Freightliners. So, you know, I think over the life of it, there's not a huge difference from operating one to the other. Uh, the cost is up front. Uh, we buy a, a small bus, you're in the 80 to 120,000 range. You buy the bigger bus, you're around 180 to 200,000 dollars. So you get you hit a lot more up front. But I will say that most of our buses are bought with various grants, anyways. Mm. <clears throat> Thanks. Somebody asked me, and I was trying to rack my brain, and when we purchased the trolleys, but it seemed to me like it was close to being the same. As we haven't done an extensive analysis on it. You know, they 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 all get really bad gas fuel mileage. <laughs> you know, it's bad or better. You know, it's where you're at on those things. Yeah. But again, the the maintenance guys absolutely love the buses that are on Freightliner chassis. Thanks. Any other questions? Are you finished? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think the explanation that you gave here in the in the package is is good, and what you said is fine. And, and uh, this is a action item. So I'm looking for uh, uh, a motion to adopt the resolution for a re recommended budget. Is that the action we want to take now, or, or do we want to wait for this to come back as an actual budget? No, we, we need you to go ahead and pass the recommended budget so that we can start using okay. that, and then we'll come back okay. for a resolution with a final budget. Okay. So we're looking for a motion to adopt resolution 4017. Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt resolution 40-17. I'll second. Okay. Did you have more questions? Nope. Okay. Good. Any public comment? Seeing none, bring it back for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Passes 4-0. Next item. Approval of a new fixed route schedules based on recommendations accepted last fall and incorporated of new transit center and incorporation of the new transit center. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, we just wanted to present the schedules that we've come up with and working with uh, the drivers and our uh, management team uh, to reflect the changes that you approved back uh, last fall. Uh, again, this uh, eliminates uh, the Route 6, but we are backfilling that with additional general public dollar ride hours to that area. Uh, these are the first time we've seen actual schedules proposed, and we just want to put it on the public record what we'll be putting up. And then we'll uh, at some point put this on our website, and this will allow us to go forward with Cole Video, who does a lot of our, uh, who's got the contract to do our brochures and whatnot. We get on with that so that we can get this disseminated to the public well before the actual implementation date. Okay, and what one's the impl implementation date? It's well at this point it's August twenty first, but who could knows? be later. Uh, it okay. feels like it's going to be later. All right. Any questions for staff? The only question I have is uh, once everything is. Um, no, I'll wait till you do get to reports and ask my question. Okay. Uh, Looking for a motion to approve the new fixed route schedules. Mr. Chair, I'll move that we approve the new route schedules. Second. And second. Any public comment? Call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. 
Item number six, reports. Mr. Evans, just a couple of reports. I want to first uh, acknowledge the uh, YARTS ridership increases that we've seen. We've had a 136% increase over last year. Uh, during the 15 days of May since we began, uh, we've served uh, 1,378 riders, or rides, I should say. It, you cut that in half for the actual number of riders because they're going two ways. Uh, that's substantial. It's way more than any of the other corridors, and I think it, uh, Tyler deserves a lot of credit for his efforts as well as Lisa Mayo and promoting the service. I think we... I think it's fair to say that some of the YARPS representatives have noted how, more act, how much more active we are on our corridor to make sure that the campgrounds and the hotels and the op are all uh, promoting this service to their customers, and that results in our ridership. So Tyler deserves a big attaboy on that. And yeah. Those are great numbers. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, after our meeting yes yesterday, I uh, pulled through the through the the parking lot was almost full at uh, Wayside Park, wow. and uh, it was mostly arch 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 riders. So I, I think that uh, you know it's noticeable. I know the people up there really really like it. Uh, they uh, uh, it's, it's something I think that they're trying to sell, and I don't think without you guys promoting it, they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't do it. So thanks for the effort. Yeah. Any other? I have one other report. Okay. Um, I did want to mention that uh, earlier today the City of Sonora Parking Committee considered the request to put in a uh, passenger loading zone for the Yarts bus stop at California Inns. We did send a letter previously to them, so they've acted on it and they did approve it. They're going to move the bus stop slightly down about maybe 65 or 100 feet. So it'll be between, it'll be right outside the office of the California Inns between the dr their driveway and be back motors and we actually think they'll be a, little, be a little bit easier for the bus to maneuver in and out of uh they're probably going to put up a sign that also uh says something to the effect of bus loading only from 7 a.m to 10 a.m and 4 p.m to 7 or something like that so uh we're pretty happy about that we appreciate the city's efforts yeah, to that's support gonna us. be a positive for the city of sonora because all those people are staying here and spending money Isn't that downtown yeah. <laughs> and of course that <laughs> stop will be used by the the Dodger ski bus and if we do get a Pinecrest summer service it'll go there as well and then when they leave here they're heading up to Groban absolutely and on to Yosemite any other uh, reports any other questions seeing none do you want to wait to the next one all right I do have a question before um, Carl speaks and my question is Carl's not going to speak until the next one <laughs> okay until, well then I won't I'll do my question now okay. instead of waiting until Carl speaks okay uh, once the new transit center is complete and usable when will you start when will uh, there be a conversation or starting of a plan for what's going to happen with the existing courthouse uh, future courthouse um, uh, maybe Alex can help stuff. me out but I believe we submitted a grant application for that Alex did we not get funded on the grant application No, not yeah we had a grant application to uh, look at relocating that to Washington Street and then looking at what we could do with that street there uh, so it's, we certainly need to kind of come up with a plan on what we're going to deal with that. We do, all, at this point, envision having a bus stop there to continue to serve that part of Sonora. It just won't be a main stop that has three or four buses at a time there. Uh, there may be some other opportunities to uh, seek out some grant funds, so we'll keep an eye out. I, I got one in mind already, and maybe another try to get some funding there. We, we applied for the same grants we applied for. Uh, on the 49 complete street so we submitted two grants I believe for that possibly a third and we only got the one so right now there's there are no dollars to do anything that's correct or to plan for anything that's correct okay thank you but we're working on it I, yeah. okay we, we, that we're always working on it right <laughs> right okay so uh, I'd like to now adjourn the Tuolumne County Transit Agency meeting and convene the Tuolumne County Transportation Council meeting of June 14th.
First item on the agenda, oral communications to allow public to speak on any item that's not on the printed agenda. Seeing no one wishing to speak, item number two, approval of the May 10th, 2017 meeting minutes. You got a consent calendar, aren't you gonna do it all? Pardon? It's a consent calendar, aren't we gonna do two, three, four, and five? Oh, you're right. We have five items on the consent calendar. Four. Four, thank you. <laughs> Approval of the April 12th, 2017 minutes meetings. Approval of the final triennial performance audits for the Tuolumne County Transportation Council and Regional Public Transportation System, Tuolumne County Transit. Approval of agreement for funding swap between the county of Tuolumne uh, County and the Tuolumne County Transportation Council. Any questions on the, the consent calendar? Any public comment on the consent calendar? I'll bring it back to the council for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I will move approval of the consent calendar. All second. We have a motion to second. Any public comment? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None passes 4 0. Regular agenda. Adoption resolution 564-17 approving the Tuolumne County Transportation Council overall work program for physical year 2017-18. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, as you probably recall, you did see this item, I think it was back in uh, March, we brought it forward, April, we brought it forward to the draft uh, and sought your input on uh, the overall work program. Likewise, we forwarded to Caltrans for their comments. Caltrans made a fair amount of comments that we've addressed. Uh, most notably, they wanted us to, a little more description on how we were gonna deliver projects and the task involved in delivering those projects and then attach some dates to that. So we've done our best to identify uh, dates and more specific work that'll be completed. Um, some of the highlights uh, though uh, from you, that we've added into this OD uh, overall work program this year uh, include uh, an update of the Regional Traffic Impact Fee Program. Uh, and an important piece of that is uh, we recognize that J59 is a major arterial uh, in our community, particularly for goods movement and interregional travel, as well as Oberns Ferry Road. Uh, we have added some money into that line item so that we can do a master concept plan working with the county on what is needed on those roadways uh, for the future, identifying uh, where we need uh, more perhaps shoulders or passing lanes, uh, perhaps left turn pockets at intersections, and then identify the cost of those, estimated cost of those things and be, develop a financial strategy to deliver that over a longer period of time much of the, some of those uh, costs might end up in the fee program. So we've kind of attached that to our fee program as kind of a subcomponent for our consultant to work with us on. So that's a, a good highlight there. Uh, then I also want to mention we had a request from uh, the folks down at Yosemite Regional Transportation System. They're updating their transit development plan, which is the plan of how we're going to, what they're going to do with their service over the next five years. They didn't, they asked if we could contribute some money towards developing a plan for Tuolumne County. I think I spoke with you last time about that. Uh, we promised to kick in $20,000 out of our planning funds uh, that will not only look at uh, a fourth run for the yard service, but perhaps even extending that fourth service all the way down to the valley, perhaps connecting with uh, the ACE train or an Amtrak location or some other, uh, you know, logical place uh, to begin to bring in more inter-regional transit through this corridor. So they're going to add that to their scope of work. And then we did get two grants and we uh, needed to add those to our draft uh, work program. The first ones I just mentioned was uh, a grant application for complete streets planning of Highway 49 uh, all the way from Jamestown up the 49 108 way corridor coming up Stockton Road. Uh, to the fairgrounds and circling back through, I, I believe it's Fairview Lane or something up towards the high school, then going up Highway 49 corridor, not necessarily on the highway, uh, all the way up to Columbia College. 
So that's an uh, important piece of planning that we'd like to put together, working with Caltrans, city and county folks. Uh, I think Carl, Carl will uh, agree with me that as a result of kind of the, the, the Caltrans trying to be a more of a multimodal agency, not just road centric, uh, we're going to see more and more whereas Caltrans does projects, maybe a paving project, they'll look to our local plans to what is the, what is the plan for that corridor and try and incorporate more of those alternative modes uh, into those projects. The CTC has said that they're gonna be looking for that effort. It's certainly consistent with what the governor has said he wants to do in, in terms of uh, responding to environmental groups' concerns on SB1. So uh, the timing's great for us to put together a plan that we think is achievable and can be incorporated into other projects down the road. And then finally, uh, we did get the, through the Energy Commission, a zero, in, zero emission vehicle planning grant. Uh, again, this is one of Alex's projects. We'll work with uh, Amador, Calaveras, Alpine, and I believe Mariposa counties to plan out uh, you know how much you know we'll, we'll estimate how many uh, electric vehicles will be in the area uh, what are their charging needs where do we should we start looking at having chargers that are reasonably spaced out for people to go to uh, maybe where parking lots are like a parking lot perhaps in downtown Sonora that people could park at and then use the maybe go to the restaurants and whatnot uh, also work with uh, some of the shopping centers went up, but then more interestingly is look at public fleets conversion into the zero emission vehicle world. What would it take? Which fleets are uh, would work well for that? For instance, we the, we did get a lot of support from various department heads of the county converting their fleets over, where overnight they could charge uh, in those parking lots. Of course, you'd get grants to put in the chargers, get the electric vehicles, and kind of get that kick that off. Uh, Probably the light duty fleet is uh, of human services or perhaps like a building or planning department would make a lot of sense. So we're going to get that planning effort going with those grant funds and they all, and the, both grants needed to be incorporated into the work program. I have to comment on the Tesla charging station there in Groveland. It's being used a lot. Wow, uh, great. Uh, before, just before I uh, uh, got sick, the... I went by there. There were of the eight proc. There were six Teslas in in there being charged. All of them were downtown, having having lunch. So I awesome. mean that's that's what you if you're going to stop for an hour. At least that that's uh, that that was a good a, a good project, and I'm I'm happy to say that I, I see it. Uh, and it's going to get better once they release that new vehicle. Yeah. And I, I would point out that we did get an Energy grant Commission grant uh, earlier in the year to install uh, electric vehicle chargers uh, in the parking area near the uh, Museum library. Museum library, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, those negotiations are underway, but those will be kind of more universal chargers to all electric vehicles, which I think will be helpful as well. Do the other companies like Tesla provide funding for these things or is it uh, is that public funding i think tesla paid for the they one paid for tesla everything. pays for yeah, theirs i know that no but the I'm other companies about the other are, ones this is coming through the energy commission okay uh you got any more no that's all okay uh so what are action is uh number six uh, adopt resolution five six four dash one seven. <laughs> so moved. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, just a minute. Item number six. Five six four dash one seven. Oh, five. Five. Oh. Approval of Tuolumne County Transportation. Okay, Council I got it. I got it. I was okay. Don't try to confuse me. No, you confuse me. I, uh, but that's because I'm just not used to this. Okay. I have in my book five six four one six. Is another problem. Five six four oh. one seven. Five six four one seven is what Mine I got. Mine says one seven also. You says one six. What page oh, you? It's a prank on, on the six. new guy. <laughs> We're pranking the new guy. I have a bad book. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no you didn't, because because in the the resolution behind um, tab six does say five six four dash one six. 
So what's one? What's the correct one? <laughs> so one seven. One seven. So okay. So is yeah. this, a, is this an the, error in the? That's the fiscal year. Second. Must okay. be a staff error. Okay. Uh, well, uh, you know, simple minds are easily confused. I apologize oh, uh, for being well, one of those. You did all right. Uh, glad you caught it. So we'll make that correction, and uh, before we sign the resolution, and everything will be fine. Okay. So we had a, a first. Who second that? Who's, I did. Uh, okay. Any public comment? Say none. Call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Item number seven adopt resolution 56017 adopting the TCTC recommended budget for physical year 2017 and 18. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to have our senior budget analyst, uh, Laura Shin, give the presentation. Okay. Again, if you could refer to the handouts, there were changes made since the books were printed. Okay, this is revised. Revised budget and staff report. Okay. Thank you. Um, again, we're presenting a, bu a balanced budget for TCTC. Um, some of the high points, again, is the LTF. Um, we're seeing an increase or we're budgeting an estimated increase of 4.7 percent. We TCTC will continue to use um, county services, auditor, informational technology, legal services, human resource, and facilities management and we will remain in the existing um, facility. I should probably note, and you guys may actually know more about this, but I have heard that the county is exploring the possibility of us paying a true price of rent for the office space that we have. And if that comes to fruition, we'll have to make that change in our final budget. Do you, did they give an estimate of dollar amount? Or? Nobody's even contacted me on it. It's only, we've heard the discussions at the board okay. meetings. Uh, everything's discussion at this point. So. Yeah, and for whatever it's worth, we don't pay pre, uh, an amount that I would consider anywhere close to uh, what the value of it is. So we've always kind of expected this. So I'll just leave it at that. Eventually? Yeah, eventually somebody would get wise to that we're getting, a, I think we pay $300 a year or something like that. Yeah, that's uh, pretty reasonable. <laughs> yeah. That's very good. Well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we will continue to um, fund a GSI technician for around 200 hours um, with the cost of 13455 The bicycle pedestrian local transportation funds and res reserves will continue to go towards the non-motorized transportation program. Again, we have our transportation planner promoting to a transportation planner two. Um, Three percent COLA in increases for the director and the senior administrative analyst. And that's it. There is one other thing we have in here, and it is a um, chart. And Title II of California Code of Regulations, Section 570.5, require that we adopt a standalone pay schedule and that we post it in areas that are accessible to the public. So that's what we're looking at here. We're going to post it to the website. And um, I think that will um, fulfill our requirements. And we're required to also keep a 90-day cash flow amount, which is three, three months' worth of expense for the TCT um, at, at a minimum. And that's 233,200. Actually, it's 232,832 this year, 232,832. And that's um, to help with our cash flow. 
And I believe that's the highlights. Any questions? I have one, because I was just a little bit confused. On page six of the narrative, um, the first paragraph. The new, the new narrative? No, in the, in the uh, okay. page six of the, in the book, the, yeah, of the, which you do a great job on uh, putting all this into a reading format, not the, not the papers that were handed out. But um, I was a little confused. It says, for the past three years, the TCTC has only had approximately $60,000 per year to program. This is PPM. Yes. Fortunately, fiscal year 2017-18 program has increased to 66000 then the next sentence says the 2014 step only add an additional 131,000 for fiscal year 18-19, uh, which would be 66 and 18 and 65 and 19. So is PPM and is the 66,000 uh, in fiscal year 18 the same as the 66,000, which is the PPM? Yes. All right. I just want to yes. make sure I read that correctly. For a total of 131. Okay. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. Uh, we're going to look for an action. Adopt resolution 564. Excuse me. 560-17. Uh, almost. Almost made a mistake. You're really confusing me, John. <laughs> <laughs> so looking for a motion. Um, Mr. Chair, I'll recommend uh, to adopt resolution 560-17 and the recommended budget for fiscal year 17-18 as proposed. Second. Second. Any public comment? Seeing none, call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Passes 4-0. Okay. Next item. Item number eight, report on available funding for the Twelman County Transportation Council and initiating a call for projects. Yes, Mr. Chairman, as you might recall, in years past, uh, we uh, get an annual allotment of uh, RS Regional Surface Transportation Program Exchange funds. Uh, this year, we're expecting to get uh, approximately three hundred and eighty-seven thousand one hundred twenty-two dollars. Uh, when we add that to our uh, beginning fund balance of thirty-six thousand nine thirty-seven, we have four hundred twenty-four thousand uh, and fifty-nine dollars available, and we are using, proposing to use through our work program and budget, one hundred fifty-seven thousand of that, five hundred fifty-two dollars of that, uh, for our work program. We are also intending to exchange next year $125,000 to cover our administrative costs. We'll exchange it with the county is what we're proposing, and uh, they would hopefully put that into their budget for next year. And that leaves $141,507 available. Uh, in years past, we would keep that in reserves and build up towards various projects of the TCTC that we saw as highly, highly important. but. Uh, a few years ago, you did decide to uh, do an annual allocation uh, and do a spring call for projects uh, on what funds are available. The uh, funding is only available by, according to your policies, by resolution to the city and the county to compete for. Um, but that is only after you've decided that you don't have a better purpose for those funds. So you always have that option of allocating out to some other purpose should you want to. Uh, the funds that are available are only available for certain types of projects on certain classifications of roadway. They generally don't include uh, minor collectors and below or local roads. So uh, what we'd like to do and what we're encouraging you to do is to recognize these funds that are available and uh, do a call for projects uh, to the city and the county and then allow them to submit up to a deadline of July 19, 2017 uh, for projects that they would like to propose consistent with eligibility requirements. Uh, we have worked with the city and the county to uh, get the discussion going on potential projects. Uh, they're working on that as we speak and uh, we look forward to receiving those funds 
and bring in uh, recommendations to you at your August meeting. Okay. Any questions? Seeing none, this is not an action item. So we'll go ahead and... Uh, Mr. Chairman, if we can just get a simple approval to initiate the call for projects. Okay. Uh, motion to approve call for project. He's moved. Second. We got a second. Any public comment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 4-0. Okay, last item, reports. I've got more than a few this time, so All I'll right. try not to go too long. I just want to mention that uh, I, as your executive director, I participate on the project development team for the Green Limono widening project. Uh, yesterday we met uh, to review the bids that came in. Uh, the bid, if I got my numbers right, were, is $1,024,412 uh, for the base project from Reed Construction and an alternate for uh, $33,600. We recommended that both of those go to the City Council with a re recommendation of approval on those bids. It is within, it's a little bit over the engineer's estimate, but within the project budget, when you consider contingency funds that were budgeted for this project. If there's no questions, I'll move on. Uh, I did want to mention that uh, this, the California Transportation Commission has initiated call for projects in the Active Transportation Program Fund uh, with SB1 uh, funding coming forward. Uh, they would like to move forward with what they call a uh, <coughs> supplemental allocation on their cycle three. In cycle three, the city submitted uh, the Red Church pedestrian improvement project uh, and the county submitted four or five different grant applications. I can't recall all of them at this time. In this call for projects, they're only taking applications that were previously submitted to them uh, and they're going to do two allocations under that criteria. Uh, the first is only $10 million available uh, by September, excuse me, and applications need to go in by June 30th, 2017. The second allocation is for $200 million, a much more significant amount. Applications need to be in uh, by the 1st of August, 2017. Again, they are only looking at applications that came in before they're not opening it up uh, looking at the city's project uh, it scored very well it ju it's just a few projects below the cut line when you throw uh, 210 million dollars on they easily should get funded uh, i would also point out that uh, ctc staff have said that if you can deliver the project earlier in 2018 or 19 you'll get even a higher prioritization so with that in mind, we're really encouraging the cities uh, to resubmit their previous grant uh, and look at ways to move that project forward. Uh, and then of course the county uh, might also consider resubmitting some of their projects. Unfortunately, when we look at their uh, projects and how they scored, if everybody resubmits, they're not likely to get funding. However, maybe some projects don't get resubmitted for some reason. Uh, and perhaps if the county can find a way to deliver those projects uh, in 2018 or 19, they may get some additional uh, points for that to, uh, uh, to perhaps secure some funding. Uh, we'll see. And then finally, I wanted to mention as part of that call for projects, they did recognize that there will be a significant amount of funds available for a cycle four active transportation program and they're looking at January 2018 uh, for a call for projects on those funds. So, so even I if you're not part of this cycle, there's another opportunity in January. I hope, I hope uh, Duke, you're taking good notes about getting all of those uh, projects you want to get done into that grant cycle, right? <laughs> you don't have to answer. I can, get started. I can speak at the mic as, and name the projects that we had on okay. the ATG. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, okay, go ahead. Do you got more? Uh, yeah, other reports. Uh, just want to mention that uh, we had we did meet up yesterday. Uh, Supervisor Gray uh, met up with me and Duke and uh, one of your citizen advisory committee members, Bob Asquith, uh, to look at the conditions on Old Priest Grade and the traffic patterns up there. 
I, you know, maybe we just hit it on the right day, but the traffic patterns were much improved over when we were out there in September. Caltrans and the county have made some effort to improve signage out there, uh, as well as reach out to some of the GPS mapping companies to get uh, some of the mapping services to not route people up old priest grade we've had some success in that area we're going to double down on those efforts again because we know some of the mapping services have not made the changes and then we reached out to caltrans because we noted there was still some confusion at the top of the grade on which way to go and uh, there's two signs that caltrans had not uh, installed and to caltrans credit we let them know about that yesterday that we're still awaiting those two signs and shockingly they said we're going to put one in tomorrow and then they're scheduling a crane to bring out the second one as soon as possible so that's good news yes good response <clears throat> i also wanted to point out that i was at a meeting with caltrans on design flexibility uh you know too so often in the past we've heard from caltrans that what we want for various uh, improvements are not consistent with the manual specifically the highway design manual and uh, we had a presentation by the uh, headquarters chief of design uh, as well as a Caltrans attorney who defends Caltrans and they talked a lot about design immunity as well as the opportunity to look at other sources of information in uh, really they set the stage for Caltrans engineers to use more engineering judgment and have more flexible designs and how they do things which is critically important in some of our rural communities where you can't implement the manual it just isn't going to work so uh, hopefully caltrans uh, engineers were listening and understood that uh, that's important and it was the reason for this is it's important is they realize that in many of our communities uh, the state highway is the main street and if they want to implement the governor's vision of promoting more bicycling and walkways they're going to have to be flexible in doing so so that's good news. I just wanted to let you know about that. We're heading in a good direction. Uh, likewise, I was at a meeting with uh, Caltrans district director, his, his management team, uh, and some uh, folks from the um, Miwok Chicken Ranch Band of, of Indians. Uh, I probably botched that, I think. In the, I think it's Chicken Ranch Band of Miwok Indians. Uh, looking at the possibility of putting in a new entrance to uh, the casino uh, off of Chicken Ranch Road, uh, but the new entrance would go down to Mackey Ranch Road with perhaps a traffic signal there. Uh, I think they specifically stated, uh, like the design of the intersection off Highway 88 accessing the Jackson Rancheria and some of the signage that's there as well and the beautification efforts. Uh, what we settled in on is that uh, they will update their traffic study. They did mention that they intend to build a new area for uh, the bingo activities and then where your bingo is presently is would become more of a gaming area uh, and other things. So that needs to be incorporated in, in the traffic that goes with that into the traffic study update. Then they would do a preliminary design of what they would like to do out on the highway uh, work with Caltrans a little bit on that and then do cost estimates if they can keep it under a million dollars for the improvements within the state right-of-way looks like they can do it with an encroachment permit which is kind of an easy breezy process so to speak and uh, but if it's in the one to three million dollar range then it'll be Caltrans oversight it's a little bit more intensive effort but uh, looks like they'll be working with a consultant to bring that all together and we're going to help facilitate I think that would really help Chicken Ranch Road yes they they recognize it's overburdened as it is and there's a a growing number of accident concerns right there, there at the intersection yes okay and uh just want to mention we did uh, john you know all these things but i want to make sure the rest of the board is aware that uh, we did have some discussions with caltrans regarding improvements in the groveland area uh there, we've talked often about the caltrans project to do turnouts on highway 120 priest grade I think there's four of them planned. I think that's supposed, I think John, I told you it's supposed to go this summer. This summer, yeah. So that's good news. Uh, hopefully I'll encourage more people, particularly the heavy vehicles, to go on the, the new grade. Uh, there's also a crosswalk project planned to relocate two crosswalks in downtown Groveland. 
That includes some sidewalk improvements as well as an ADA ramp, uh, as well as interactive speed signs at each end of town. Uh, that is scheduled to go in the summer of 2018 unless they need right of way, which could add a year or two. So, and I would expect that's going to need right of way. Yeah, it's, uh, how long has this been? Three years, I think, <laughs> since we first met on that. But it's it's going it's going forward. These things take a while. It's moving. Yeah. It, it's moving. It's in the program. It's in the pipeline. Yeah. Speaking of projects that have taken way longer than you would expect, is we did get a culvert project uh, agreed to by Caltrans there between the firehouse and the Groveland Hotel. They're going to widen the culvert. We had some complaints that people were falling off into the ditch. <laughs> Uh, which is never good, of course. It's going to widen the culvert, expand the, the shoulders, and I think put even some railing up in that area, and that's supposed to go this summer as well. My understanding is that they are finalizing the property purchase uh, documents there, right now. There was a crew there this morning doing more surveys. That's the most surveyed piece of property <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. So maybe that's, uh, maybe that's, that's the That's part of the progress. Yes. And uh, then finally, I want to mention we had a meeting regarding the Yosemite Junction. It was a project development team. I think you might recall that there was a, what they call an ICE document, intersection control evaluation done there. Uh, CRA and myself uh, did score, provide scoring of the different intersection configurations. Uh, ultimately, the project development team uh, chose the high T design, which I believe is kind of the locally preferred design alternative. And they are trying to move into what they call the PA and ED phase next summer. And they've got funding for the whole project. We, we do have uh, at least one, well, just one uh, engineer in Caltrans that would rather have a traffic signal, just a plain traffic signal there. He's not getting much support from the project team, but I'm concerned that he might create delays in this process. So just wanted to alert you to that. That's it for reports. Okay, any, any questions? Thank you for the report. Carl? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Got a lot, too. Um, First, I'm going to start with uh, one of the easier ones. Uh, we had a concern about the um, phasing on the signal at South Washington um, and 108 opposite Lime Kiln. Um, apparently, the, the detector loops were damaged while they were doing the work there. The contractor is responsible for doing the repair, um, so they've been given notice to fix it. Uh, if they don't fix it, then Caltrans will go fix it and charge them for it. So uh, it's not fixed yet, but it's noted and it's in process. How much time do they have for, for Caltrans? Does it? I think they have 72 hours. So, so that's South be? Washington and 108. And yeah, I guess it's affecting the right turn onto 108. Okay. Or, or it's left probably, turn. Left turn, yeah, probably. I think it's the clearing of the intersection yeah. before you it, can make the right turn. It was stacked up all the way yeah. to the post office okay. the other day. Yeah, yeah, got, <clears throat> got one of those. It lets you know that those things do something. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, the second one, uh, this uh, stacks up a little bit with what Darren was talking about with the new um, call for the active transportation program. Um, all of this is, is part of the CTC implementing uh, SB1. Essentially, you have the legislation, then you have to do the regulation to actually say how it's going to work. Uh, so SB1 uh, creates a, a couple of new funding programs, and it makes changes to some existing funding programs. Essentially, they have to produce guidance for all of those programs to explain how, you know, is this going to have formula, is it going to be competitive, what are the rules for that. Um, they put a document on their website that they are calling the, where did it go, implementation plan for SB1. So it's the plan for the plan. Um, and 
the, there may be newer things coming out. They did some scoping uh, last Thursday and Friday, uh, working with the public and with the stakeholders uh, to get input. But essentially, this is uh, pretty short at six pages, and it um, tells you more about where they're thinking of going than, you know, I found it more useful than trying to read legislation or, you know, you get CSAC has all these summaries and things. This is actually from the CTC, and it gives you some indication of where they're going. So one of the items with that was about the ATP and that call for projects. Um, it sounds like they've, they've developed that a little faster, and I think that's the fast track. Essentially, um, the ATP is, is granting money that's going to be a couple years out. Um, so what happened is now they got more money in the ATP that's filling into years that um, you know, were, was called for uh, a few years back now, a couple cycles back. So they have to have some way to move projects up, and that's why you're, you're getting that, um, that call for projects. The, um, the other things, are, I mean, they're, they're what you expect. Uh, how, how are they going to be working with Caltrans on the shop projects? Um, you know, their, their guidance for that. Um, there's also the STIP. There's, uh, they, they're calling it, SB1 stabilizes the funding for the STIP, which isn't exactly the same as giving it more money, but I think they're trying to fill, if you recall, um, a bunch of money was removed from the STIP, and they're trying to fill the hole and, and make, essentially, people had to, to move projects out. They're trying to make them whole again. Um, uh, then there's a couple, there's a congestion relief and um, uh, trade corridor enhancement. Those are um, also going to be considered. So that was a good short read that, that helped considerably. Um, another item was uh, bots dots. Caltrans is not, no longer going to use bots dots. Those are the little round markers in the lane lines on the freeway. Um, they're non-reflective. Um, it's been a long, long time. They, they first were tested in the 50s. Uh, so essentially everything is reflective now. Um, what they're doing essentially to, um, what, what the new thing is, is the uh, delineation, uh, the striping is going to be six inches now. It's all reflective. Uh, so they're going from four inches to six inches. Uh, they've done some testing and they found that uh, it's just as effective. There hasn't been any decrease in, um, in accident rates without the bot stuts. Um, so that's that. <coughs> the, I guess the next thing would be what I provided you, uh, an email and a little map. Um, about the crosswalks in Sonora. So I, I know we all saw that article in the paper and it's un regrettable there was an accident and um, we hope for the best for everyone involved with that. Um, the, um, and there was some concerns raised about, you know, how to deal with the congestion and the crosswalks in Sonora. Um, and some questions about um, how we had responded to the city wrote a request back in December asking for us to look at um, putting in the, the lighted crosswalks. So that email is there just to document. Um, we did respond. They had just done a safety investigation um, and uh, recommended a project, I guess, to uh, uh, enhance the, the markings, crosswalk markings. Um, so they had the data. Uh, they didn't do a new investigation. Essentially, uh, they, they couldn't recommend putting in the um, warning lights or flashing beacons. Um, so I want to go a little bit more into what they're thinking and what that means to them. And that's what this map is for. Uh, so this map is from a program called TIMS. Uh, it's at UC Berkeley. 
there's a there's a link up in the corner of the page. Uh, you can go there yourself. You have to make an account, but anyone can make an account. And um, it's an interesting tool to look at safety data. This is not how Caltrans looks at safety data. Um, we have engineers that do it. This is really more the planning level. It's a visualization tool. When I've zoomed in on these maps, I can see that, you know, the information for this one says it's at this intersection, and lo and behold, it's not actually there on the map. So it's, it's not perfect, um, but I think you can get the general idea. The conclusions that they, they found is that they don't have a single place where you would put in this, you know, uh, flashing beacon uh, crosswalk that's going to solve the problem. It's, it's distributed pretty well up and down the corridor, and you can see that from the heat map. Um, so there, you know, there is a potential that you could choose a location and, and, and do that. And we talked about, you know, I brought in the information about the rectangular rapid flashing beacons um, can be put in under a permit. They're relatively low co cost. That would be a cost that the city or, or you know, would share with regional funds. Uh, that's up to you, but um, it's not something Caltrans would um, install. Uh, it doesn't need a warrant. Um, the, the problem is where, how are you going to choose where to put them? You can't put them everywhere because then they don't really do anything anymore. There's just flashing lights all over the place. You, typically, you know, we talked about Stockton Road. That's a good candidate for something like that. And typically you see these at schools or, or places where you really want to bring attention to a particular location. But in downtown Sonora, it's one after another as you go through town. Um, so Caltrans is more than willing to work with the city and the TCTC to, uh, you know, work out a solution that works for the community. Um, the, you know, there's multiple ways to try to improve this, and um, we're willing to, to hear the concerns. As Darren said, we, we just got an earful from headquarters about design flexibility and, and you know, that, nothing wrong with that. Um, if we're going to get, get with the program, we've got to walk the walk. So, Carl, this, this map doesn't extend to the high school. No. Which is another problem area on 49. Yeah. So uh, they, did, they did a safety investigation there when the request was for the, um, you know, the intersection improvement. So all of those things, number one, they change over time. So you can always ask again for a safety study and, and you know, after time has passed and the data is actually going to be different, they can go back and look at it again. The, the point that I wanted to bring up with this map, though, is that I think the question needs to be asked as to what's the best way to try to solve this problem? Do, do you want to see flashing lights or do you want to see the pedestrians? And if we go into, you know, the discussions we had with Vision Sonora, a, a huge part of the concept was to shorten the crosswalks by putting in the bump outs at the corners. The bump outs remove the parking right up at the corner. Uh, and they let the pedestrians be on the curb out where people can see them before they come out from behind the traffic. And really that's, you know, I, um, <laughs> when I come through town, I feel safer as a pedestrian because I can look for eye contact and I can look to see if cars are slowing down. But when I'm driving and it's just clogged, I'm just creeping up to each each intersection looking for who's coming out from behind the the, the other cars and and whether they're they're looking um, so that's a more expensive solution uh, it's a more long-term solution um, it, it has you know when you start talking about changing the the curb line then you're also talking about drainage and it gets a little more complicated but um, 
I would just urge everyone to, to think about whether that, uh, it, it, partly because this is a distributed problem, it's not just one mm -hmm. location, um, and whether that's another way that we might want to go. Talking to the business folks who <clears throat> observe what's going on on the street, according to them, there's a lot of close encounters that will never show up on the map because absolutely yeah. yeah but there's an awful lot of slamming of brakes when people are getting out there and, and they're not seeing them until you got to slam on the brakes and the other question that <clears throat> came up as far as I was concerned was at the stoplight of Stockton and, and of Washington if you're coming up Stockton you want to make a left hand turn onto Washington and there's a pedestrian who's going across the crosswalk, he gets the go sign for the pedestrian. So now you've got a pedestrian crossing and a green light for the left-hand turn of the car. Is there anything that can be done to... To prevent the green arrow while they're yeah. crossing? Um, yeah, I think it, it turns into a phasing problem because then... Um, if you know if there's no one in the crosswalk, then you've, you've got right. a red yeah. light. Yeah. Um, so I, I'd have to take that to the engineers to see if I, I don't know of a way around that. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. T typically, well, it wouldn't activate until somebody hit the button the crosswalk. Yeah. But, but typically, you'd have a conflict monitor device installed in the cabinet that would realize if. If it gives it a green to the pedestrian and green to the conflicting turning movement, that's a conflict, and it would trigger a, the signal to go into all red mode. So I, I'd be surprised that we don't have that conflict monitor already built into it. I don't think there is. I think when 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 you get that green arrow, um, it still happens. But I, I'll 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 ask. Yeah. Um. <coughs> So, Carl, yep. does Caltrans have any um, documentation or um, st uh, statistics on what has worked best in where state highways are um, coming through small towns? We're, we're not the only one that has <laughs> this problem. So, so what's the what's what's the magic solution? That the solution that works besides because uh, traffic's not going fast in downtown no. Sonora but people are um, first of all people are not really aware even if even sometimes when I get co eye contact with the driver they just go right by me so um, I saw I wonder if there's any type of statistical information that has been done for situations like ours, I because th because the general public would like to have a lighted crosswalk at every crosswalk that we have in downtown Sonora. And if the city decides that they want to install them under permit, I don't know that we would stop you from doing it. Um, you know, I think you also run into the people in the historic <laughs> preservation community are are gonna. So, I mean, all of those things happen, and that's the context in which we live. Um, we have something called our Main Streets Guide. Yeah. And if you read through it, um, you, you wind up thinking, this sounds an awful lot like uh, this. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. So, um, there aren't any real surprises in that. And the truth is, it's all dependent on the context. One of the problems, you know, for for Caltrans, it's, it's not a problem, it's just the way the world is, is when we make decisions about things like this, we don't just get to, to draw a circle around a problem and solve it and, and not worry about how it affects the rest of the world. When we, someone wants a signal because it's so hard to turn left out of that location, we have to look at who's going to get rear-ended once the signal goes in. And that all winds up in a lot of engineering study, and, and the system has to look at all of that. 
And it's the same in this kind of context. And it's never the same depending on the location. One of the real problems here, when, when we started looking at things like in-pavement lighting, is whether anyone can actually see the in-pavement lighting when the, tr the, the road is clogged up with traffic. And um, so in some ways, those RRFBs, which are you know, mounted on a sign uh, up pedestrian height, in, in some ways are a, a better solution than a lot of the other solutions that are out there. Um, they're inexpe inexpensive, um, they are proving effective, and um, they're pedestrian activated. Um, and they're not that obnoxious. I mean, it's not like, you know, they're they're, they're, they're obnoxious <laughs> enough to, to, to get your attention, but they're, um, you know, they aren't going to make the, the buildings light up and <laughs> flash in the windows for the whole town. Um, Carl, what is the, the red dot within the green dot? So that's, <laughs> that's the heat map. So what it's showing is that the, 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 redder it is, you know, the transition is from green to yellow to orange to red. So the redder it is, the more they're identifying that as a spot that uh, has collisions. So you could make an argument Lineberg. <laughs> that Lineberg, uh, in, in Lineberg has the, the, the corner before you get there. So there certainly is, are ways to look at that to think about um, if you do want to put those in. And the other point in putting it there is that it, it kind of would tell people you're heading into this corridor and there's a whole bunch more of these to come. Uh, not necessarily more flashing lights, but a lot more crosswalks to come. So there's, it, it's never simple. Um, well, uh, in the planning of the um, intersection at Stockton and South Washington Street and South Washington Street, South Washington Street and Church in that planning those uh, the safety uh, will be looked at as far as how that whole intersection will be in the future so you're talking with the with potential for the transit project right there. exactly yeah. so uh, then all we have to do is find money to actually implement well, and you, safety measures. You talk about a, a crosswalk that you could shorten at <laughs> Church Street. Right. <laughs> and um, if we're fortunate enough to get the uh, dollars for up at Elkin, then that's another safe, but th those two um, situations, there's, there, there, are, there is or are dollars to, at least, uh, possible dollars to uh, put in safety mechanisms there. So now you're down to really one, two, three, four, five crosswalks. But well, and plus but the city hall doesn't even show Even if up you, here. even yeah. if you today had the dollars to do it, it it takes you know just like we were saying. You're not going to get it done <laughs> tomorrow. No, it takes time. So it's a shame that we have to wait till somebody gets hurt before it happens but and before it a uh, solution comes up anyway so is there are there any uh, are there any crosswalk grant uh, lighted crosswalk grants out there that uh, well there's of course there's the safety grants the uh, highway uh, HSIP funds Highway Safety Improvement Program funds, but that's highly dependent on the number of accidents. Okay. In this case, we're mostly trying to prevent accidents. That uh, so the I'm guessing the HSIP numbers don't work for us. The only other area that I can really think of is we talked about earlier tonight that $141,000 in uh, RSTP exchange funds that we did call for projects. You do have the prerogative to just directly allocating that to a project. Uh, so like this. Do you know if there's any place in the state of California that's using flags at crosswalks? Did you carry the flag across? I've seen it, but I can't tell you where, okay. and I can't tell you that it was on a state highway. I think, you know, <laughs> 
what are we going to say? I mean, the truth is you're using a crosswalk and, you know, the fact that someone put a bucket of flags there doesn't make you any less safe, so I don't see how that would be a problem. Is that it? Um, is that it? So I, wa I wanted to make sure that we, we address that, and I'm happy to talk to anyone um, to make sure that we're, we're hearing concerns and, um, you know, working towards finding a solution. Um, the other thing I wanted to report is that um, we talked a few months ago about a presentation on our asset management approach for the shop. Um, at that time, we felt like we didn't have enough of the details nailed down to, to bring that out. Um, it's looking like that would probably be possible in August. Uh, we do have our internal guidance together. Uh, we're looking at um, doing our project nomination for the 2020 shop using this process. So. Um, our, our asset manager uh, is planning a presentation and it looks like we should be able to have that for you. Okay. Um, and then my last one is um, SB1 also increased money for uh, planning grants. So be aware that the planning grant program will probably be coming around uh, September or so for the call and usually they're due about November. Um, so if there's ideas that are out there that need a little massaging and a little development, um, it's a good idea to be thinking about those well in advance so that we're ready to get them uh, submitted and they're well developed for the applications. And I think that's it. All right. Thank you. Thank Duke. you. I've got one. Okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> uh, Carl, every month we have a meeting. The city has a meeting downtown mm -hmm. and I wonder if it would be possible for you to attend one of those meetings to uh, answer questions that they have as far as this pedestrian situation is concerned. Yeah, the next meeting is on the 28th of this month. It's at 8 a.m. in the morning at City Hall. You can let me know. Yeah, I think uh, I just, I'll let you know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Duke, did you have yeah. Mr. Chairman, if I, if I may jump in uh, while Duke is walking up, I, I, would, I want to just mention that uh, all of the staff are wanting to use accrued vacation leave time on July 3rd. It's the Monday between the weekend and July 4th. And uh, if it's not a, a problem for the uh, council, I'd like to go ahead and just close the office for the, that day to the public. The staff can still come in if they choose to work, but generally I think everybody's going to take the day off. don't have any issues with that. We're, we're not. Thank you. They're, they're paying it with their own time. So. Yeah, they're just using, drawing from their crude time. Mr. York. Well, I thought I was, uh, I, I think I'm just going to start out with that ATP because it was brought up under discussion. The prior applications that we had made were five different projects. Uh, the Columbia sidewalk project that kind of connected to the grammar school to the rest of Columbia and especially that housing uh, that's uh, out there. And uh, the Somerville Trail project, the racetrack road walkway project and drainage improvements uh, ties into the um, the Dragoon Trail head area down at the bottom there and it brings it back up into the racetrack area and ties into several of the existing subdivisions. If you're familiar with that road there are ditches on both sides of the road no so when we're talking about drainage improvements we're trying to make use of those ditches, put them underground, put the walkways or shoulder areas to have wide enough area for people to uh, move from those subdivision areas back into town. So um, the another project is a Fifth Avenue sidewalk project. And the one that we scored the best on and we did in kind of in partnership with Caltrans is the Groveland Pedestrian Bike Improvement Project. 
Uh, I know you're familiar with that, John, and uh, very worthwhile project, and uh, we'll, we can resubmit on those. Just keep trying. <laughs> uh, some of the things that uh, have affected us is the storm damage, obviously. Uh, John, I'm going to hand this to you. I didn't know with you being out. We did this presentation for the rest of the board. Randy, I know you've seen yeah, that. Okay. And, uh, we also went up, we also did a presentation in this room for the people north of the river, and we did another presentation on storm damage right there at the Groveland Community Hall and uh, made all of that information available had several interesting visitors. I did talk to you about some of the folks that showed up there and uh, and uh, we gave them a lot of information, not only about storm damage, but also about hazard trees and the coming fire season. Um, Bonds Flat Road Repair. Uh, for the benefit of your board, uh, we have been reviewing plans. Uh, it's been, been going a very quick exchange with TID. They are going to be paying for the repair there. And currently, the proposal is to have that work done, hopefully, by the end of June. Uh, yeah, isn't amazing. But all they're going to do is reconstruct it the way it was. Yes. Uh, the fill in the area that had been removed and um, the it's a very key issue because from a fire standpoint we've got the fire station on one side over on 132 and it makes the response time over to unit one uh, a lot longer so this is a, a key issue uh, the Lake Don Pedro fireworks show is going on this year it will be occurring on uh, July 2nd uh, from a traffic uh, circulation and control perspective, it's easier if we keep that road closed till then. So, um, and that falls on a Sunday. July second falls on a Sunday. Um, as part of the FERC relicensing, is and and in uh, Lake Don Pedro. One of the issues that we brought to the attention of them uh, is the need for a left-hand turn pocket at the intersection of J59 and Bonds Flat. And that, that turn pocket uh, would be very beneficial and certainly with all this uh, detour route work that has occurred, it's highlighted that even more. So uh, we kind of put our uh, foot in the door with that one. Um, let's see. Storm damage. Um, Before you leave Blanc Bonds Flat. Yes. My problem is that Bonds Flat reconstructing that road the way they had it before long term, I just don't think it's a viable solution. And the reason is, I mean, look what happened when you took that thing out. How much longer is it to go the long way around? I'm talking public safety. Okay. Going the long way around is a lot longer first responders and everything else. And the people down at Lake Don Pedro in that area deserve better than that. Plus, all you had to do is look at what happened when they deconstructed the road and they opened one up one floodgate and they didn't open it fully, they virtually filled the channel. I mean that thing is grossly under designed and if we really had another big year and if you believe in climate change and more rain and less less snow and all that kind of stuff, what's gonna happen? You tell me, I don't know. But I don't think that's a long-term permanent solution uh, of the, uh, the best choice. That issue was brought to their attention. Um, Who are they? TID. They're the, they're the they're ones, the ones that are paying for it. And I their agree. response, uh, for the benefit of everyone, is that they could replace it 20 times for the price of a bridge. Which is what you're really but talking I about. I understand, but that, that doesn't work. Look how long it takes to tear it out and replace it. If it goes out on, on its own because you get a massive flood flood out through there, you get uncontrolled spill. Uh, that's worse than a controlled spill and the damage. But it doesn't make any difference. You still have the first responder problem. And and I just I'm just 
questioning whether the people that don't like Don Pedro are getting what they deserve in terms of uh, public safety. I, I, th this is an issue we brought up back in '97. Uh, way back and then also this time we brought it up we had a discussion prior to it spilling that it was they need to do something yeah. something differently i don't know what type of pressure we can put on them to to uh, fix it now and then come up with a long term a long term solution in other words fill it in for now <coughs> but you got to do something else and i think maybe from the you know bring it up to the board level to to for us to get involved on a long-term solution. Don't stop what you're doing right now. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, <laughs> let's, 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 get it, let's get it done, but then let's really go on record saying from the board perspective, we're not satisfied Stanislaw County, our okay. TUD. We need to, uh, 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 our TID, we need to have something better for the future. This FERC relicensing, that is, that is the key I think that would be an opportunity, but whether or not that that process can stand that kind of cost, I don't know. We're struggling to get a lot of things out of them uh, because there's other issues at Ward's Ferry Bridge, and I know you're aware of yeah. them, John. So, uh, I, but I, it's worth the ask. If you don't ask, you don't get it done. Right. And I think it's more of an ask. It's it's a demand. But let's bring it up to the. Okay. To the, you, to the board I'll level. You. You know, that's, that's what we need to do. But okay. don't stop doing what you're doing right now. Let's <laughs> yeah, get that real yeah. fixed. Yeah. Okay, amen, okay. amen. Okay. Um, quite a few of the uh, projects that we're moving ahead on on the storm <laughs> damage, there's over uh, just about 38 to 40 of those projects uh, past some of the photographs of the worst ones. And we are moving ahead with those. Uh, you know, it's a cash flow issue, and, and the FEMA requires a NEPA process. They do the NEPA. We can't do it uh, uh, locally, and that uh, affects the, the timelines. Because yeah. the more problematic ones, the big ones, you know, the big slides, Italian bar, Marsh's flat, those are big dollar items. And uh, the overall cost of these is eight and a half million. But meantime, we are moving ahead with as many as we can can, without going through the NEPA process, but. Uh, okay, and the storm damage, you, you can't just leave it there because there's dramatic uh, other storm damage issues on the forest roads, uh, Cottonwood, Beardsley, et cetera, and they're seven figure fixes. I mean, we have huge storm damage issues uh, in, in here. I don't know what Caltrans has in, in other their jurisdiction. I know that you've got problems on Highway 4 going over the, uh, the pass on the back side. Yeah. You talked to Supervisor Woodrow in Alpine County. Uh, I suspect statewide you've got tons of them. Uh, but uh, but I just think everybody ought to be aware if you're going to talk storm damage, we got a lot of storm damage in the county. Yeah, yeah, we, it's we, a big issue. It's going to restrict our ability to, to do the things we need to do. I'll, I'll, I'll just highlight one issue in that regard. Uh, when you talk about the Forest Service, Hetch Hetchy, and the county all have roads that are damaged in, due to storm damage. And I'm just going to talk about one area, Cherry Lake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you talk about Cherry Lake and you're talking about access via, via Cottonwood Road, what I'm hearing right now with the Forest Service, isn't, they're not going to get to it. They don't have the money. And they're not going to be able to open that. What, IRFO or whatever it is? Yes, IRFO. So um, then Hetch Hetchy, I mean, they've got critical infrastructure down there. They're going to be putting in a signal on a part of that road. And I, you, you drove down there. Is that correct, John? I didn't go down to early intake, but yeah. I, I was on May 3rd. And, and they're going to be putting some sort of a traffic signal that's going to, because there's one lane portion going down there. So it may turn out that the Hetch Hetchy Road is the only road that will get you into Cherry Lake this year. I suspect uh, to be increased demand. You saw the picture of the fish and, guy caught in Cherry Lake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. There. Uh, one thing I did talk to Hetch Hetchy about, though, they're doing valve work on Cherry this year. They're actually going to drain the lake. I've heard that. And so 
if you're not going to have access, good year to drain the lake, I suppose. But uh, uh, that is the combination of all these agencies being affected by storm damage will affect the county from a uh, tourism perspective, I, I predict. So um, I think that's all I have to report at this time, but I'm certainly available if you have questions. All right. Any questions? Seeing none. Meeting? Uh, I, I, I've got, I've got. You wanted to get out of here by 5 o'clock. <laughs> I actually will. These, these will be quick. I've got two, two questions, and uh, Caltrans is here. This is good. What? We have that little section of road that we took over when they put the last section of bypass in, and it goes from up by VSD down to Standard, and it's in terrible shape. When are we going to get the money to fix that? We we have the money coming for that. There's no loss of the money. I, they gonna, delayed it. They it. they delayed it because of a funding issue. Darren, if you want to well, explain we, the funding aspect of it, the county is actively working on that project with funding that's already been allocated from the CTC to them, so that they can get it through the environmental review process and complete design we just re got uh, we should be getting authorization right now to yeah. get the design underway and there's also some funding for any right-of-way needs there might be there may be a little bit of a right-of-way need so you're funded all the way up through right-of-way that's going to take a few years uh, and then after that we anticipate in the 2018 state transportation improvement program call for projects new money being available right now we we had to push the construction dollars out to 21 22 with sb1 there's a chance that we might be able to move that construction date forward we'll we'll see we'll know more here in the next few months that's to, to fix that road do the you have to do the yes. ramps first before you fix yeah. the road because you're going to destroy the road during the road during the construction yeah. of the ramps yeah. to some extent yeah the ramps are funded and we and we're hoping to even move that forward a little bit when's that scheduled uh, 2018-19 and that's locked in yeah our project is slated for spring summer of 2020 uh, now programmed to 2021 the the issue and, and the segment of road you're talking about is from that traffic signal down to standard yes. it's called the monoway operational and safety program and both the state and the county had to delay and, and there's nothing unique to our situation. Remember, there was a $754 million reduction in revenue to the State Transportation Improvement Program. We had to cough up some concession, uh, and part of that was construction for that project. It's still moving forward, though, with the funding it has through right-of-way and environmental. And then, you know, now with SB1, things kind of ebb and flow when it comes to funding, and right and it was bad a few a year ago where we lost the 754 million statewide and now it's coming in with the gas tax increases and we're hoping to put that right back in the program the reason i bring it up is i'm getting calls about it. i've heard some talk that the that the project's been lost i've heard some some people make the statement the project's been lost it has not been lost it's simply been delayed i knew it was delayed i just yeah gotta stay in our program delayed not lost okay okay that it? Meeting Thank adjourned. You. Thank you. You beat it, May 5 o'clock. See, I told you. Guaranteed. I was worried for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you started late.